Hi, guys, look like we're back. Uh, I am D2 with Monk, and we are English casting the Celestial Invitational. Uh, the first match we saw was Firebat versus Zoro, where Firebat took that three games to one. Next, we're going to be seeing Life Coach versus Blue. Another reminder that uh, all these players have to play all nine decks today in this round robin. Uh, so, Firebat, Zoro, Life Coach, Blue in this group, they will all be playing each other uh, once, and in each of those matches, they will have. Uh, three different decks to use in their best of five. Right, so Life Coach, uh, he's definitely the player that we know the most about. Blue is a Chinese player who qualified through open qualifiers. D2, I know you casted most of those open qualifiers. Do you know anything about Blue in particular? Yeah, I, I did cast uh, Blue. He was the actually last uh, person to qualifier in week eight. And uh, the notes that I got going into that tournament, he was one of the qual or sorry, one of the invited players for the qualifier. Uh, so typically in one in those eight man qualifiers each week or for those eight weeks, they had uh, two invited players, three players that came from a pro qualifier of about 50 people, and uh, three uh, open qualifiers who came from a pool of about 500 people. So he was actually invited to the qualifier, and uh, in that qualifier he was able to get out of there. As we see, life coach on the screen. But uh, the notes that I had going into that was he was one of the best players in the early Hearthstone days. So probably around uh, early beta uh, was when he was pretty much well known, uh, at least in China. Uh, as for recent accomplishments, as we see the decks from Life Coach, uh, he qualified for WCA 2015 main event um, through the Pro Qualifier. So those uh, pretty accomplished recently. Uh, what do you think about these decks from Life Coach? All right, just getting the decks right now. The uh, priest deck, the dragon priest deck, is uh, pretty much a carbon copy of the deck that Tice used at BlizzCon, except for one uh, brand Bronzebeard instead of one Zombie Chow. So mm -hmm. a bit more value in the deck. The control warrior deck is looks to be pretty standard. The deck that Life Coach used at BlizzCon was a very heavily teched. Uh, anti-freeze mage deck, so this is probably more of an all-around deck. So, another interesting part is that he uses Spellbreaker over Owl, a decision that most people would probably disagree with, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, the most interesting deck, of course, is going to be this Reno Jackson Paladin deck. <laughs> a lot of streamers have been trying it out to mix success, and I have to say, I'd, personally, I don't find it as good as Secret Paladin or mid-range standard mid-range Paladin, but <clears throat> You know, this is Life Coach. He kind of refers as uh, like the most controlly decks possible. Yeah, I think Life Coach just wanted any excuse to be able to put Kel'Thuzad in his Paladin again, uh, which is what he loves to do, obviously. And uh, yeah, I kind of have to agree with you. Paladin is one of those decks, or one of the classes, excuse me, like Druid, where you kind of want to have two ofs of the things in there. You know, two of mini bots, two of muster for battles. Those cards are just right. too good, in my opinion. But he's going for the more controlly approach. Uh, I believe that's, is that a Mookless Champion in there, uh, in that 5-slot? Right. Kind of hard to uh, look at that. The uh, It's kind of small, but, um, oh, probably a turtle, actually. Probably, probably the um, the healing turtle. Uh, but we are going to be taking a look at blue here. And, uh, uh, honestly, you said it's an excuse for him to put in Keldazad. I think it's an excuse to, for him to put in Piloted Sky Golem in his deck. <laughs> yes, because he does love there, there was, too, yeah. <laughs> there was one point where he ran lineups with... Two pilot sky golems in each of those, um, in each of his decks. It was mech mage, um, control paladin, and druid, and he had around like five piloted sky golems uh, <laughs> between all the decks combined. Yeah, he definitely does love that card. Uh, we are going to be seeing blues uh, lineup here, a lot more aggressive. Um, as far as the paladin is going to be secret paladin for the mage, it's going to be aggressive with uh, one fell reaver. It looks like in there. And uh, looking at his druid, um, it's kind of standard with a Sylvanas, it seems like. Right, and the living mounted roots. raptors instead of shades. Yeah, and also the living roots in there too. That's what's this... the what's the three cost card? Is that a shade as well? Uh, I believe he, he might be. Yeah, he might have shades and raptors just to be a little bit right. more kind of early game focused and aggressive. So uh, that looks like we're going to be seeing how these uh, lineups pair against each other. Life Coach obviously sticking with his control you know, lineup and uh, Blue going with a much more aggressive style though. Some of these decks are kind of mid-rangey so not super, you know, face with the, you know, like the Shaman or, you know, Face Hunter or something like that. 
Yeah, so we can still kind of respect Blue, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> Just a little bit. We will see his yeah. decks. We'll see his decks later. He has yet to show his shaman or his hunter, so uh, maybe we might see some face decks out of him yet. Uh, but yeah, going to be an interesting match. Uh, Life coach. It was really uh, interesting at BlizzCon because obviously he wasn't able to get out of groups, but uh, the way his, you know, his uh, decks were lined up there. Uh, if he had gotten out of groups and you know managed to find a way to get pitted against the European players, he might have actually gone to the finals or even won it just because of uh, how his decks countered there. It's really right. kind of interesting rock, paper, scissors at the finals so, there. So I was talking to all the players at BlizzCon and we were just all going over strategies and everything and everyone was really afraid of Life Coach because Life Coach's strategy was basically to bring three decks that countered Freeze Mage because he knew that at least two or three of the players would be bringing Freeze Mage, and he wanted a 100% win against them. Um, those players were, um, he knew Oskaka would bring Freeze Mage, and he knew Purple would bring Freeze Mage, but he, and he knew Tice would bring Freeze Mage. He wasn't sure that Nyria would bring Freeze Mage, but having four players bring Freeze Mage, it means like out of the 15 players you could face, you have four free wins. And that was his strategy throughout all of BlizzCon. So to that extent, he brought decks like, he brought Control Warrior, obviously, he brought um, he brought Druid with Ragnaros and Lothem, and he brought um, he brought Handlock with Siphon Soul to beat Doomsayers, and he brought uh, a, he had a Kazan Mystic in that deck basically. Yeah. So he would lose to pretty much everything else, but he would beat Freeze Mage. Unfortunately, it didn't work out because he was in a group with zero Freeze Mages. But we were all saying at BlizzCon, if a Chinese player or an APAC player brought that lineup he would be almost guaranteed to mm. go to the finals because there were two Europeans and two North American players who brought Freeze Mage. Right. And Life Coach being a European player himself, he had less of a chance um, to bring that card. Yeah. Or le less of a chance to face a European with uh, that lineup, basically. Yeah, definitely. And uh, maybe life, and even if Life Coach did manage to get to the finals, maybe he would be pitted against one of the three APAC players who got out of their groups. Uh, just want to show pride for that group since I did uh, try to qualify for the uh, through the mm -hmm. Japan region, uh, the one well, that Kano was able to get through. Well, your, your countryman did pretty well. Top yeah. four at BlizzCon is uh, no easy feat. In fact, uh, I believe repeating your performance as well. Yeah, exactly. The same, uh, fell in the same spot. As far as this game goes, uh, look, Life Coach has some interest, an interesting card in his hand. Not too surprising to see the Fierce Monkey being put into oh, Control Warrior. Life Coach loves that card, and have you ever <laughs> seen him cosplay that card? Or he, not cosplay, but just like, like kind of act like that card <laughs> when he plays it. He does the he does it the best, better than anyone else. He goes like, ooh, ah, 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 ah. I have never. He uh, goes full monkey, basically. I have never heard a Life Coach role play the fierce monkey, but I can only imagine. Uh, do you see the Spellbreaker, which is pretty good in this moment? Obviously, Life Coach froze and can't use his weapon, and. Um, he will be able to potentially get, you know, a 4-3 on the board and maintain that sort of uh, tempo and board uh, presence uh, if he decides to go for it. Right, and the key part here is he gets rid of the mech um, so that on turn 4, Goblin Blast Mage won't be uh, activated. Uh, Life Coach obviously very familiar with this because we were talking about how Life Coach only plays like 5 decks. Well, Mech Mage is one of those decks. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, one of those instances where he kind of uh, played outside of his comfort zone, outside of his box. Um, so yeah, probably knows the uh, the fear and inherent in the or not knows the the threats. Excuse me, in the mech mage that could follow. Um, one thing talking to life coach, uh, the one or two times I believe that I've met him is uh, he's really interested in, in figuring out which decks are good and how to counter them, and uh, just really a student of the game. So. Uh, definitely knows, even if he hasn't played other decks, you know, what's the kind of uh, pitfalls there. Yeah. At the same time, though, um, even he, kno he knows how to play against uh, pretty much every deck. He only knows how to play certain decks. He's a, a firm believer of the idea that um, to be a student of the game, you have to study, um, or to be really a master of a deck, you have to study it for like hours and weeks at a time. And, you know, by the way Life Coach plays, he just ropes every turn. He plays like that the same at home as well. So it probably takes him even longer to learn a single deck. So that's why I really like this <laughs> format for him. It really takes him out of his comfort zone. Yeah, definitely to be able to play, having to play all these uh, different decks. That would be interesting to see, especially with the um, Priest later on. Though, uh, I tend to think that 
I think Life Coach made a good decision uh, with that Dragon Priest as we kind of um, talk about the overall aspect of this game since Life Coach is sitting here con uh, contemplating life for a second. But uh, I think that's probably one of the better choices uh, just because Dragon Priest is a bit more straightforward. You're kind of just fighting for the board uh, like a lot of decks do rather than, you know, Control Priest, which can get a bit dicey with all of the crazy decisions you have to make over the course of a game. Mm. Right, it's a very like play on curve deck, um, and Life Coach, of course, he probably got that deck from his teammate Tice, so he probably trusts uh, him very well for a guy who mm -hmm. like has just been dominating lately and gotten to the round of four at BlizzCon. Yeah, absolutely, really nice to be able to kind of lean on a teammate in that instance. Uh, we see a naked uh, Goblin Blast Mage without you know the extra four damage, which is sad for Blue, but obviously is. Excuse me, his opponent is uh, frozen, so maybe he'll get some extra damage here. Uh, do you think Life Coach will go for the Execute here? That's something. I mean, he could go for the Justicar as well and just start uh, building up that armor. Right. Um, I think he's fine with uh, just using up one of his Executes. It not only does it uh, put an ex uh, a Cruel Taskmaster on the board, but it also gets rid of one of his clunky Executes. Life Coach, of course, disagrees. Um, I guess. If your opponent can't deal with this um, this Justic card, then it's going to be trading off against something. And the Mirror Entity is, uh, you want to proc it with the Cruel Taskmaster. So overall, this uh, ended up better than um, if he had just executed his opponent's board. Yeah, I really like the patience from Life Coach. Um, it's not Well, not just patience, but also just the greediness, right? Uh, knowing that, okay, I don't really need to get rid of this Goblin Blast Mage. The lowest I'm going to go on board is down to 20, which is pretty comfortable. And a lot of times, it's really hard to get Justicar out there. You want to get Justicar out as fast as possible, so that whenever you have that extra mana for being able to armor up, uh, it just ends up being that much more, obviously, because now it's a tank up. And so, I mean, it seems kind of scary, you know, you have a 5-4 on the board that you can't get rid of, but uh, typically, going against Mech Mage, the board can be a lot scarier than that, you know, many creatures on the board. And uh, this is relatively tame, Life Coach uh, decided decided to right. go for the uh, Justice card uh, instead. Right. L Life Coach also knew that he would be uh, unfrozen this turn, so he knew that it, even if his opponent had Frostbolt, he would have to choose between Frostbolting the Justicar and Frostbolting his face. And he, uh, as long as one of the minions was uh, still alive on board, I think a Life Coach would have been okay with it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Justicar is starting to be able to get some uh, damage, and typically don't see that. Uh, looks like uh, <laughs> we have a graphic here for the Dr. Boom, uh, something that Blue would want to see here. And... Um, yeah, Life Coach in a really good spot here. Blue needs to kind of pick up his high-end minions, that being Dr. Boom, probably Antonidas, uh, Fell Reaver. I didn't get the exact list, or I didn't get all the cards in there uh, with that quick glance. But um, yeah, going to be looking for those uh, to be able to kind of sneak a win here. Otherwise, you know, Life Coach might be just running away with the game with a tank up every turn. Uh, tank up plus uh, the Shield Slam is going to be looking pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, Life Coach... I, I say that, uh, it's not really unfortunately, but he doesn't like, he can't deal with this board completely perfectly in the sense that there's a mirror entity on board. He gives his opponent a 2-2, two -two, but I think he's going to be okay with that. Cruel Task, Brawl, and uh, you win the Brawl with the Justicar. Go. <laughs> right, right. Well, and then you Shield Slam the 2-2, two -two, I guess. Well, actually, that is a, that is something to be that's an interesting consideration if you think about it because uh, with the tank of every turn, maybe Life Coach deems that his Shield Sam is more valuable than his Brawl, so he could actually Brawl here. Yeah, and he seems to be pointing towards face, so that's definitely a possibility. But if you Brawl, do you go for do you go for the Cruel Taskmaster first? Um. Looks like he's not going there anyway, so probably just gonna, yeah, he's gonna clear. He figures that this dies to a hero power anyway, doesn't need to really push the damage. He doesn't have a way to finish the game off anyway, so gonna have even board here and uh, the ability to tank up every single turn. Uh, that cool Taskmaster going to face doesn't even negate the, dam the damage from the, uh, from uh, being able to tank up, so. Actually, because it's gonna be a concede from blue here, just gives up. Doesn't even want right, to try he with the Fell Reaver. Yeah, he probably didn't want to show his opponent the Fell Reaver because uh, this is, of course, conquest mode. He'll have to win with this Mech Mage yet again on some other, on some other turn, basically, um, or on some other game. But Life Coach getting, I would say, an unfavorable matchup out of the way. Um, but kind of, kind of. <laughs> yeah, 
It's uh, it goes. I don't think it's too unfavored. Uh, it's uh, not too bad, especially if you can get that justice car up. But uh, good good play right. by life coach and uh, good cards too. Giving being able to get those weapons in. Right. Uh, yeah, he got both weapons. He drew both weapons at the exact right turns. He drew a spellbreaker, which is mm. uh, lined up perfectly against the um, the piloted shredder. And he also got a Fierce Monkey on yeah. turn 3, so everything worked out for Life Coach. Yeah, definitely that Fierce Monkey played a huge difference because uh, typically, you know, the things that Warrior can do on turn 3 are pretty limited to something like Bash or maybe even Acolyte of Pain. So, and neither of those things really contest the board. He was able to get something down on the board preemptively um, after he was able to kill off his opponent's minions. And obviously that's different from Bash, where you can't, you know, kill a future opponent with Bash. So uh, that Fierce Monkey, just having that presence on the board helped him out a ton. And uh, just one, just killing one minion can prevent the game from snowballing. You know, maybe uh, Blue gets his opponent frozen with that snow chug and gets a lot more damage because he has multiple minions on the board. Uh, could have snowballed and made a bit closer match. Uh, but yeah, that made a huge difference, I believe, with that Fierce Monkey. But it looks like we're going to game number two. Life Coach with his Reno Paladin and Blue going back to that Mech Mage. Right, you can't even tell this is a Reno Paladin at this point. I mean, all these cards look pretty uh, pretty standard here. Well, these are the normal ones, right? <laughs> it's going right. to get strange from here on out. Um, uh, when we see the Pilot Sky Golem, although the Pilot Sky Golem is something that Life Coach always puts in his deck, so interesting to see what he goes uh, with from here on out. Yeah. Blue looks the, kind the of... One Blue looks kind of uncomfortable. What do you? I mean, he's kind of like looking off. Maybe he's just impatient, waiting for life coach. Yeah, his hand wasn't lo honestly looking that great um, with all these burn spells in his hand. Like you don't really own a fireball in your opening hand, but now that Mech Warper has been drawn, it's suddenly looking a lot better. Yeah, definitely that can help him out uh, immensely here, especially because Paladin's kind of notorious for not being able to deal with a two-three on turn two. Um, right. I will say that Reno Jackson is a very welcome draw for Life Coach. Um, I, in general, I feel like Temp or Mech Mage isn't one of those decks that both puts on pressure and burns um, in the final turns. Usually, what happens is the Mech Mage kind of fizzles out in terms of board control, but it has enough damage in their hand at the final turns to burn out the opponent. So, um, if Reno Jackson gets on the board, and I, if, I think it could be really good. Yeah, definitely. That could be something where Life Coach maybe has to use it at you know 15 or so health just to kind of mitigate the damage. But he does that, that does mean he gets a minion on the board, you know, different from something like Tree of Life, for instance. Um, but it'll be interesting to see this game how quickly Blue is able to identify uh, that this is indeed Reno Lock because there's or Reno Paladin, excuse me, because there's nothing in the hand right now of Life Coach that's out of the ordinary. Right, uh, and honestly, Life Coach. Because every one of these cards is a one of, I think he's drawn just completely amazingly. Yeah, exactly. uh, the only thing that would the only thing that would make it better is um, a shielded mini bot on two. Probably a little better than the knife juggler, but other than that, these are perfectly standard cards and some of the paladin's best cards. Yeah, definitely. Uh Interesting decision um, coming up here for Life Coach now that Blue has played that Tinkertown Technician is that uh, you don't really want to be wasting your Consecrate here uh, or your True Silver for that matter just because obviously they're one ofs. So um, we'll see how kind of greedy he gets. It kind of uh, go from minion to minion combat maybe with that Keeper of Oldamon or if he decides to kind of uh, pull the trigger with the uh, Consecrate to get these minions out of the way right away. Loth of obviously also a consideration here as well. So, uh, what do you think is uh, the play here? Um, I kind of favor the Keeper of Ultimon. I, I don't particularly like Consecrate here because it's kind of like your panic button. When uh, things go completely wrong, you can always use it to clear the board. Uh, but Life Coach at this point, he doesn't really need um, that to clear the board. He just can rely on minion combat. And there are some pretty good trades with this 3 3 on board. Yeah, definitely. He's able to uh, clear out this Mech Warper, it seems. Yeah, going to go for that and probably phase for the last one. And all of a sudden, yeah. you know, Life Coach, this 4-4 four -four trades uh, well with his board. But other than that, he's got the board lead, which is uh, what you really want when you're playing defensively. Right. Um, Life Coach doesn't even trade into the 4-4 four -four because he knows his opponent can only really uh, fire a ball once, use the hero power once. So. Now he knows basically that this 1-1 one, one will be able to trade into the 4-1 of his opponent and he can just get one extra damage in. I imagine he's going to just use his face because he can kind of just use his life as a, you know, 
really use his life as a resource, not even using his life right. really, just kind of uh, getting a free shot in. Uh, instead, instead, he decides to attack in with the 1-1. One, one. Um, maybe he's disguising the fact that he's playing Reno Jackson? I felt like I would have used my face there. Right, that that could definitely be a consideration as well, disguising the fact you're you're re using Reno Jackson. Um, maybe one other aspect of it is that you've seen your opponent has really clunky has a really clunky hand, based on this these off curve uh, Tinker Town technicians. Um, so you probably suspect that he has a hero power uh, lined up mm, on right. his following turn, which turns out to be the correct assumption. Yeah, so life coach saving three health there uh, by doing so. Um, kind of a risky play because if Blue had something, you know, to play that turn, it might have been a different story. But uh, yeah, Blue using the fireball there to get rid of the sludge belts are usually something that's that's something you want to see as the uh, control player. Like, okay, that's a fireball not going to my face. But Life Coach doesn't really care about a fireball to the face unless obviously it's something that uh, preempts his Reno somehow. But uh, yeah, right now Life Coach is like, no, don't. Don't uh, clear my minions with fireballs. I want to. I want you to throw that to my face and just kind of smork it and just be greedy. Right. So life coach, he sees his opponent has a really clunky hand, so he must be thinking at this point. Okay, I suspect my opponent probably has a Doctor Boom or something on the mm. following turn, and uh, judging by that assumption, I think I would have preferred something like the Lotheb on this turn because what happens is if you play Lotheb then the Consecrate on the following turn clears the Dr. Boom, whereas with this play, with um, he needs to take an extra 7 damage to his face. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, obviously a, a bit of a defensive play by a life coach. Um, could have gone for the more uh, you know proactive play, like you mentioned. And, uh, yeah, could be taking a lot of damage, though. He does have a ton of healing uh, with that Leia Hands and Reno Jackson. Reno Jackson, a bit of a slow card. Uh, not too slow. You get to have that you know, 4-6. It's it's a pretty good card if you're building the deck around him. He's one of your best cards, obviously, but um, lay on hand to something that will take a turn to do and you don't really get to do much else. So, uh, interesting to see how Life Coach kind of um, determines the best way forward. Blue, on the other hand, is uh, doing his best Life Coach impression and roping when he has 7 mana and a Doctor Boom that's green. I, I was looking at his picture for a second to see if he'd actually been frozen, but no, he uh, <laughs> no, he's doesn't have... I wouldn't say he has too much of a decision to make here. Yeah, it's uh, it's payback on life codes, right? He just <laughs> he's been getting roped, so now he's gonna rope him back. There's his pilot sky golem. Could uh, we could see that in play right here? Uh, it's a bit bigger than Lothab, obviously, and it comes back potentially if it's taken care of with something like a fireball or frostbolt. But um, obviously Lothab doesn't can't get killed by a spell either. So what would you do here? Um, so, so the very obvious play is to consecrate and then clear the Doctor Boom. Uh, whenever a Doctor Boom comes on the board, you kind of panic because it's going to be seven damage going to your face anyway. Mm -hmm. But again, is this a scenario because you have the Reno Jackson? Can you afford to possibly play a little more greedy and go for something like piloted Sky Golem, for instance? Yeah, Reno Jackson just kind of completely changes the calculus of every single matchup because, I mean, even Healbot completely changed it uh, once upon a time, right, when it first came out because uh, you were able to heal for so much and that usually wasn't, the, that typically wasn't the case before that other than, you know, something like uh, Jaraxxus. But uh, yeah, Reno, just having that heal whenever you want potentially is uh, such a huge deal and uh, looks like he's just going to put as much power on the board and as many bodies as he can on the board. Uh, using the Lothib and the wow, L. Even going face here, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I was a bit surprised by that as well. I uh, thought he would maybe clear the boom bot that way. But uh, pretty good Blast Mage is able to clear off the two smaller minions. Let's see if this uh, boom bot... Nope, boom bot does whiff. So life goes pretty far down. His uh, greed might uh, come back to kind of haunt him here. Yeah, Thorazin is not really going to help here. So this honestly looks like... He might have to Reno here. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can Consecrate and somewhat clear the board, but then you're left with really not that much health. Yeah, you're at 7 with uh, 1 Shredder on the board. We do see that he would stay alive. Uh, I, I mean, assuming that he hit the uh, the Goblin Blast Mage with his face, uh, the Lothop into the Dr. Boom and Consecrated. Um, so he would stay alive that we see, but only one Frostbolt would kill him. He has seen a Fireball. 
Um, he has seen the Frostbolt too, I, I believe, on the Night Juggler? Or right, the right. Game? No, this is this game. This game, okay. So he's seen two burn spells. So uh, it's really risky for him to not play Reno, but I think that might be his only option. Yeah, I mean, he. the other option, obviously, is to just... Uh, oh, he's going to do it this way. Interesting. I thought he might clear the Dr. Boom. Um, and then... Uh, or using the Loth of Bandit's face, but... I guess he maintains more of a board this way. He gets the full value out of his True Silver. So... Yeah, who do you think is uh, is uh, leading in this spot? Loth, I mean, Life Coach is kind of on the back foot every single turn. Uh, but Blue is running out of answers. Or options, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, I actually... I kind of favor uh, Life Coach at the moment because Blue is running out of resources and Mech Mage is a notorious for being a deck that just doesn't have... Um, it, it, it doesn't really have any card draw at the moment. Uh, not only that, but oh man, Ancient Watcher comes on the field. Really mm -hmm. not useful. Not only that, but Life Coach does have some extra heal against, um, the, against this board. But um, on the flip side, though, I now see that Life Coach Ooh. doesn't have a way to deal with this Dr. Boom. Yeah, he doesn't have a way to deal with Dr. Boom, but he is still at 25 health, and he does have healing in hand, so I think he's okay to not deal with it for the time being, but that uh, that Haunted Creeper is a huge draw just to deal with this Mirror Entity. Otherwise, he was dropping a pretty big minion into that. Either that or Lay on Hands, obviously. But uh, yeah, probably going to see either the Pilot Sky Golem or the Thorson. Thorson can be pretty good here to reduce the cost of both the... Um, Lay on hands and the consecrate. He would be able to play both of those on the same turn. In fact, so a uh, pretty tough decision here for Life Coach. Uh, what do you, would you rather go for the Thorison for next turn or the stickiness of this uh, Pilot Sky Golem to kind of get back into to this game? So the thing is, if you Thorison now, what you you pretty much have to draw like a True Silver or an Equality on the next turn in order well, to really get back, right? He can't draw True Silver because he only has one of in the deck, I believe. Right, right. Um, so, I think, um, I mean, he maybe this maybe this uh, Consecrate can uh, do some work, but potentially if he, uh, like maybe he throws the uh, Haunted Creeper into the Dr. Boom. He's actually going to make a Hero Power, which is interesting because it doesn't really trade too well uh, with that Haunted Creeper, obviously. But, uh, I guess it, it does... Uh... It does really at least absorb one damage, so it's kind of like a heal for one, essentially. Um, we do see that Blue, he has a very key spare part here. He has the Time Rewinder, so he can basically use that to summon two Boom Bots and heal his Dr. Boom for four HP. Yeah, that's, that's probably the, the, the most effective Time Rewinder I've ever seen, actually. <laughs> In the history of Hearthstone. Uh, no, but it is pretty good Time Rewinder right here to get, be able to get uh, that value off and can play another Mirror Entity. Uh, to kind of screw with his opponent a bit. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty good turn by Blue. Uh, Life Coach, you know, perpetually on the uh, the back foot here. And, uh, nope. So, oh, actually, didn't have the chance to get the Mirror Energy, sorry. Um, because, obviously, Time Rider costs one mana. Um, looks like we have uh, the graphic for the quality that Life Coach has one of in his deck. And uh, is there a way to deal with this board currently? So he basically needs to draw a quality, which he can't do with Lay on Hands at this point. So um, yet another reason why maybe Lay on Hands probably might have been um, an okay option for last turn. Then again, Life Coach, he couldn't have possibly predicted that Blue would have a Time Rewinder, which is kind of like the card that just screws him over. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, some of the... Uh... Some of these spare parts do screw him over pretty badly. Uh, you know, something like a freeze or maybe a stealth, something like that. Uh, the other ones don't do t a whole lot. Uh, but can Life Coach survive here without playing Leon Hands? Maybe just the Consecrate? Um, I don't believe. Well, he could. Depends on the no, boom he, bots. He, he definitely could uh, if the boom bots all go his way mm -hmm. and he gets maybe. Um, Ooh. Oh, that's a useful. He gets maybe a charge minion from the Murloc Knight. He's going to take a huge chance here and hope that his Thorson doesn't die to these boom bots. Uh, so oh, he has to. So it doesn't, yeah. like, less of a chance to go for face. Yeah, so it does go face. Uh, the other one, the other boom, or excuse me, the other, yeah, the other boom bot wasn't too bad. Uh, although Antonides is probably the best card that Blue could pick up right now. It even plays the Mirror Entity. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't looking good, too good for Blue uh, a little while ago. It looked like Live Coach was stabilizing, but now looks like it's almost certainly his game. Tusker Jouster is yet another form of heal, but um, it's not really the healing that he has a problem right now. It's just threat on the board. I remember in one tournament in, I think, via game House Cup number three, uh, Stan Sivka pretty much built a Paladin deck that was anti-Freeze Mage. It had something like 10 heals in it and uh, a lot of silences. But the problem was that he honestly couldn't deal with an Antonidas on this board. So this very anti-Freeze um, uh, anti Mage deck just lost the Freeze Mage because he couldn't get rid of a, uh, an Archmage Antonidas. Yeah, and that's what can happen when you play against uh, these kinds of decks and you do have kind of a, a more techie type deck. Um, you know, sometimes you can just having you know, a stronger board and, you know, standard minions that are really hard to deal with uh, can be the best way to go about it so that your opponent has to respond to you rather than the other way around. By the way, that is Fu Oliver on the screen on the left there. He is uh, commentating for them in Chinese. And uh, I think the player before was one of the BlizzCon representatives from 2014, though I can't remember his name. Uh, he's not on screen right now. Yeah, but, Fu uh, Oliver uh, is going to be playing in this tournament, actually. I believe he's playing in tomorrow's group in Group B. I forget what group he's in, but uh, you are correct. He is in this tournament. He is one of the qualifiers, um, and uh, you know, congratulations to him, obviously, for being able to qualify for this tournament. In the case for this uh, series, it is going to be tied one game to one, with Blue obviously clearing his mage there. Uh, Life coach at the end there, I believe, going with a similar strategy as uh, Blue did in his first game, conceding before he wanted to give away any uh, information. He could have maybe gone for, you know, mini bot, set off the trap, uh, set off the secret, then go for the turtle, maybe heal, and then play the uh, the cog hammer to get the taunt in and maybe survive another turn. But he realized that there's nothing in his deck to get back him back into the game. Didn't want to show any more cards, and uh, yeah, looks like we're going to be in an interesting series here with the priest and paladin remaining for life coach and paladin and druid remaining for blue. Yeah, um, definitely, and, and I have to say that I'm not really liking this Paladin's chances against a lot of the uh, the remaining decks from Blue, uh, especially in the Paladin Mirror. I feel like uh, most of the Paladin Mirror is determined by the early game, and Blue is just going to have way more um, early game cards. Like He's going to have more one-drops, more mini-bots, more knife jugglers, more musters, more cog hammers, possibly. And not only that, but the alternate strategy is to go for a clear board with Consecrate on turn 4. And yet again, Life Coach only has one Consecrate in his deck. So that's definitely a matchup that I'm not really looking forward to from Life Coach's perspective. Yeah, definitely something to uh, look forward to in the future is that matchup. But for now, we have a completely different matchup. We have this uh, kind of hybrid aggro druid, I want to say. Uh, it has some of the aggro pieces in there, but not completely. It has some uh, later game pieces as well, like the Sylvanas and the uh, Thoris. And so, kind of, uh, I would like to say it called a hybrid aggro druid here. And uh, yeah. life, going, life Coach going with the Dragon Priest, which, as you mentioned before, he uh, haven't seen too much of it from him. Uh, honestly, though, this hand honestly just plays itself. Yeah. Brand into, One drop, uh, two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop. Pretty yeah, good opening hand. Pretty good. He had all the pieces in his hand uh, with his opening hand, but was able to get that last one with the Twilight Wilp uh, right at the end there. Looks like Life Coach, uh, he's played his Wormer's Agent, and he's deciding to rope anyway. Oh, he's deciding whether he wanted to attack, where he wanted to attack, sorry. Um, so yeah, going to be... Uh, Savage Roar here from Blue instead of any wow. of those minions. Interesting play. Just, just gets rid of both cards. Hmm. He just instantly won for that. I'm honestly pretty surprised. Yeah, I mean, he had a lot of time to think about it, honestly. He he probably thought in his head, okay, if he attacks my guy, I'm going to do that. If he doesn't, I'm going to play one of my minions. So, uh, not too surprised to see uh, the speed with which he went for it. But, um... Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of uh, danger, right, going against the Dragon Priest as a Druid. If you get, let him get the board, it's hard to come back, especially with the, you know, 6 health taunt coming on turn 4. Uh, basically a Druid of the Claw, essentially, uh, from Life Coach right here. But get silenced. Yeah. This uh, Brad is going to get so much value, getting double battle cry off the Twilight Drake, or mm. uh, Twilight Guardian. Also probably going to get double value from uh, an Azure Drake, possibly drawing two cards, turning into basically an Ancient of Lore. 
Yeah, Ancient of Ancient of Lore, uh, Twi or sorry, Azure Drake. He could also make a two five with the uh, Twilight Whelp. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I'd like to just get the two guards here. What do you think? Um, so you can make a two, you make it two five, and then you can play um, you can play Northshire and heal and power word shield, and that also gets you two cards. Yeah. That is true. I mean, but that's always, almost always going to get you two cards. Uh, the biggest consideration for that, I believe, is that you get more stuff on the board, which Druid notoriously has a hard time dealing with, a bunch of guys. Um, so, and it also kind of puts a threat on the board in that um, Northshire Cleric to kill rather than Brand Bronzebeard. So right. it's a pretty tough turn, but it looks like Life Coach is going to go for the latter option, and he's roping pretty badly here. He's going to have to kind of hurry up. Yo, oh, yeah, wow. the, I was I was just going to say, like, if he draws another Twilight Guardian, wow. that could be really good as well. That's That was insane. Uh, if yeah. by Twilight Dar Guardian, you mean Drew the Claw. Then, right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Blue kind of, uh, again, on the back foot here. Does have that like, oh, I, have to, I, have to, I have to pay five mana for this card. That's so unfair. <laughs> I know, right? But I can't get silenced, so there is that. Uh, Valen's chosen. Pretty good pickup here from Life, Life Coach. Uh, he can just clear out this Drew the Claw, and he just saw a silence, so unlikely that's going to be able to uh, get taken care of in any way. And uh, it won't be able to get BGH either, so I imagine that's probably going to be the play here. Pretty e Feels good, you know, get a clean kill, perfect math. Yeah, this just feels so amazing. You get to draw another card as well. It does put him a little vulnerable to mind control tech, but other than that, uh, other than mind control tech and Sylvanas, uh, Life Coach wow. looks to, yeah, I was going to say, un almost in an unlosable position, and Blue certainly thinks so. Wow. So the immediate concede by Blue just uh, doesn't want any part of the game anymore. Life Coach is able to clear his priest. Now only his paladin, his renal paladin remaining, to be able to get uh, this series win, blue with the paladin and druid. That's uh, pretty funny there to see. Uh, just blue just gave it up so quickly. Um, do you think maybe he's just kind of uh, tilting or just didn't want to give up the secrets of his deck, uh, all of the above? Uh, honestly, Life Coach drew perfectly that game, like completely perfectly. Everything went <laughs> like all, pretty much the best it could. I couldn't have asked for even a better draw at all. Yeah, even that uh, powered shield into drawing another, you know, pseudo druid of the claw. That was uh, pretty insane right there. But we're going to see if Life Coach can pick up a win here. He's not out of the woods yet. Uh, I mean, would you even say he's favored here? Because uh, his deck doesn't pan too well against these upcoming classes from blue. Right, exactly. I think he probably has like a. In this matchup, he probably has like a 30 to maybe even less percentage chance just because he has so many one ofs in the early game. And the Paladin Mirror is really all about the early game. Um, I would say maybe 60 to 70% of games are determined in the first round four turns where you, you see basically who can get board control. And after you surrender board control, the only two ways you can come back are if you either get a good Consecrate or if your opponent draws dead on uh, round turns 5 or 6. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate uh, as far as how the matchup concerns. Life Coach is uh, going to take his time here. I bl do believe he has to play this Iron Beak Owl. There's no real way to kill it, especially because Blue just used his coin. So uh, no muster for battle coming up from Blue this coming turn. Uh, obviously, there's things you can silence later, uh, you know, like things that are avenged. Um, but... He's going to fall way too far behind, I believe, if he doesn't use the L right now. Yeah, it's just... Uh, you, the thing is, you really want this L for things like Event, for things like Tyrion fording maybe later on. Mm -hmm. But, again, this matchup, all about the early game board control. Um, and if you don't wrestle that, then you're just going to have a bad time. So even though Life Coach, he plays... He goes for an inefficient play, which kind of gets him back the board. But he's sacrificing his mid-game and late-game power by playing the Owl here. Yeah. Um, overall, I do support this play, though, because, um, I mean, one way you get the late-game, uh, you know, efficiency of that Owl is by... Oh, he's actually... Blue's actually going to trade to save his non-silenced uh, Knife Juggler. But, uh, yeah, one way you, you actually are able to, you know, compete in later stages of the game with those, you know, huge minions that could be silenced is to just have a board yourself. And the best way to do that is to mitigate damage 
early. Uh, that said, Blue has a pretty ridiculous opening here with that Knife Juggler into the muster. Was thinking about just playing two uh, Seekers last turn to kind of protect his Silent Knife Juggler, but uh, in the end, I believe this is a bit better uh, considering the ridiculousness of the Knife Juggler muster for battle combo into Shredder, into Lothab. Uh, Lyco's not looking too good right now. He does draw into an option to clear out this Knife Juggler, and... Um, even though it's it's overall a much weaker play than just dropping a pilot shredder on curve, it might just feel like this knife juggler is just threatening enough for you to be forced to clear it. Otherwise, a juggler just it can potentially get so much value off the next few turns. Yeah, it could get a lot of value, um, but you just saw muster and not likely going to see a bunch of small minions. Uh, typically, the secret paladin they run um, miss the. Uh, Secret Keeper and mini bots and stuff like that, but uh, unlikely your opponent has exactly that in hand. As Blue makes an interesting gesture, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I feel like this uh, this shredder can clear a lot of the uh, the one ones on the board potentially if Blue decides to go for that trade. Nope, gonna go face. Not worried about consecrate at all. Uh, yeah, like I don't think he. Ha I don't really think he has to worry too much about consecrate because it seems like probably if Life Coach had it the previous turn, then uh, he would have found the Knife Juggler threatening enough. Then again, though, Life Coach is known to be one of the mo most greedy players with removal possible, judging just from the last game, where he held Consecrate in his hand for around three turns um, over what a lot of other players would have done. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's sometimes a sign of a good player, right? You can even throw your opponents off with how greedy you can be. Uh, maybe they put you on not having a certain card because, you know, you've uh, not to use it in chances where it would be, uh, you know, obvious for someone else. But uh, you know, all that said, Life Coach is in a pretty bad spot here. Looks like his uh, webcam is kind of uh, loading as well for the Chinese stream. <laughs> so we're having a kind of lag spikes all over the place here. Um, what do you think? Do you think he just clears out this knife juggler and uh, gets the value there? Because you know, obviously, if you hit the shredder, it kind of gives your opponent shredder charge in a sense. So maybe you just hit this. Uh, juggler and put up a belcher. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Hopefully, Life Coach will be uh, with us fast enough in order to make such a play. Yeah, hopefully. Um, looks like we're having uh, kind of issues all over the place. <laughs> so, but this is actually not bad either. It gets a kind of a free-ish trade onto this uh, Shredder. Is able to kill the Nitro out as well. So, uh, pretty good value on that. Oh, oh! wow. That's not bad for Life Coach either, because he gets the two drop anyway. Um, I would say that overall favors Life Coach. What do you think? Um, so what was on the board before? So it was a pilot shredder versus a potential two drop plus three one ones. Yeah, yeah I def, I definitely do think it favors Life Coach just because um, the one ones are just kind of hard to deal with if you don't have some kind of AOE. You do have your weapon, but it doesn't deal. Uh, as efficiently as possible here. Um, Sorry about a not uh, 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 reacting appropriately there. You're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Um, well, Keeper of Ultimon could be okay here. It's not like the best, where you transform a one one into a three three, perhaps, or you transform a Doctor Boom into a three three. Mm -hmm. um, but just letting it have a, a great trade is what lets you get back on the board. And like we said. Having the board uh, clear going into turn six is one of the most important things possible because it just lets the Dr. Boom be buffed, or uh, rather, it just lets the Mysterious <laughs> Challenger be buffed from um, Avenge rather than any of these other minions, which might you might have more of a trouble dealing with. Yeah, a little bit of a, of a slip there. <laughs> Called it the Dr. Boom, Dr. Six. Dr. Six, right. Um, yeah, really tough choice there for a life coach. I mean, you kind of want to play the Lothib just to rival the Lothib. You don't want to give your opponent such a good, uh, you know, trade there. But, um, you know, it was either the Oldamon to get that good trade, but then you're really only making a 1-1 one -one after that, although you do have the 3-4, or it's kind of the Sludge Belcher to protect your health. Uh, so yeah, pretty tough to choice there. Life Coach decides to go with that Sludge Belcher. Blue, on the other hand, no rope necessary. <laughs> Just immediately plays all his secrets and all his minions. Gets a m maximum pressure onto the board. And, uh, you know, Life Coach hitting a 12 health, this is pretty tough to deal with. He wants some sort of healing or some sort of roadblock to put in the way. Is ASAP right here. Right. It's going to be probably... This game is probably going to be determined in the next two or so turns. 
depending really uh, on A, if Life Coach can draw into some kind of heal, of which we know he probably has around four in his deck. The uh, Lay on Hand, Reno, anti Keel Bot, and uh, the, the Tuscar Jouster. Um, or if Blue can draw into one of his big threats like Mysterious Challenger or Dr. Boom. Or I possibly just, Tyrion. Sorry, I'm just like laughing at Blue's spot. He's like falling asleep, yawning, and now he's sitting, he's resting his head on his, uh, or his head on his hands. Sorry. <laughs> this is just too much. Uh, right, yeah. Blue, like, he's at this like big land. He's, uh, Possibly his first land, and he just uh, kind of a little nonchalant about everything. Yeah, I think he's played a few big matches here and there, but <laughs> it's just really funny to watch in general. Life Coach in the end does go for the kind of uh, the play that which puts the most, you know, stuff on the board. That being the uh, Doctor Boom, and uh, you know, it, it will kind of contest this board. Maybe he can. Find a way to get some clear here, to, uh, despite these traps up that are up. Ooh, Consecrate oh. is a massive draw. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty huge draw to me. I think, uh, I think you would go for it first, right? Before you attack. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, you do have the spell power, though, in order to help out with uh, any event shenanigans, I guess. Yeah. So he wants this to go on a 1-1, one, one, I believe, uh, the Avenge, speaking of. Oh, wow. So, oh wait, never, it's not Avenge. I'm sorry. Um, but, oh, I, I guess it's a Noble Sacrifice, right? It just didn't go off right. because the board was full. Yeah, because the, the board was full, exactly. So here's an interesting scenario as well. You kind of want to clear off both this guy and the Noble Sacrifice. But you don't want to take any damage either, and you don't want to miss your 7 damage the face. Although I guess you you might use Dr. Boom, maybe, but uh, this is so tough. Do you I mean, because if you start hitting your opponent for 7 to the face, maybe you can win the race here. Uh, so yeah. Looks like it's going to be Acolyte of Pain. I don't know. I think I would have put more as much damage as possible on the field, but I guess mm -hmm. he didn't have too much time to think about it. Yeah, I, I honestly think he was going for Knife Juggler into oh. Hero Power. Oh! It just concedes. Wow. He he had didn't he have like four charges left on his he couldn't draw anything? Um let's see. I guess he he uh, maybe he knows he doesn't run true silver in his deck, perhaps. But you know, this guy he did concede on turn five or so last game. So he's kind of like a But that he, one was kind of an early conceder. That one wasn't as bad, I don't think. I mean his opponent was at four health. Right, like, it, I guess if he knows his deck well enough, uh, he knows that he doesn't have True Silver, he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have Divide Favor in his deck, then maybe he doesn't really have much of a chance of winning. And do, just judging by the expressions on these Chinese casters, though, they're probably wondering the same thing. It's like, oh, why did he concede yeah. this early? I mean, looking at Fu Alri, he was looking, I think he kind of mirrored what you were doing, right? He was looking up, kind of trying to think of what cards could be in his deck, right? Uh, like, really? He had nothing? So, um... Yeah, very interesting game there. Looks like Life Coach's uh, standard strategy of roping helped out here as Blue right. just couldn't take it anymore and uh, went for the early concede. Life Coach will take that match three games to one, which means he is plus two for the day, uh, which that could matter in the end uh, with you know the rankings determined, uh, the tiebreakers determined, excuse me, by that game score difference. Blue loses one game to three. Our next match is going to be Firebat versus Life Coach. You do not want to miss that, so don't go away. Uh, in the meantime, we will show you the kind of Chinese trolled in videos, uh, so you can you guys can enjoy that. See you guys when we get back. <laughs> 